The 15 Rules for Babysitting 1A by The Dark Elf, an archive of our own. Read by Summer of Shadows. Summary. Aizawa and Vlad King bet that they can handle each other's homerooms better. Vlad doesn't understand why Aizawa's had so many rules. Or, Vlad is traumatized by 1A. Author's Notes. Hello. Yes, this lived in my head rent-free, so now I'm unleashing it upon the world so it can do something other than keep me awake laughing to myself. Fair warning, this is mainly from Vlad's POV, so there's accidental misgendering of Izuku until, like, Rule 8. Vlad fixes himself immediately, as he really just didn't know. Also, Rule 3 is mostly Izuku having a panic attack. Shota wasn't worried about losing the bet with Vlad King. Taking over Class 1B for a week was basically guaranteeing the underground hero seven days of uninterrupted sleep and not having to replace the toaster another four times due to Baku Squad-related incidents. What he was worried about was Vlad King losing the bet. For all that he didn't personally like the other hero and the petty feud between their classes, Shota had no real act of desire to see the man dead. He was competent enough with how he trained his class and a decent hero for being kind of a dick. And as long as he kept his feral rat dog away from him, Shota was content to let bygones be bygones. But there was a rather large difference between class 1A and 1B that had nothing to do with one being superior to the other. Plainly put, class 1A was batshit feral, and all 20 kids needed specialized attention to ensure another attempted murder didn't happen. Azawa, what's this? Shota blinked looking up from his coffee with a scowl at the 1B homeroom teacher. A paper. Surely even you know that much. Vlad scowled and tossed the paper onto the desk between them. Bold Prince stared back at Shota from between the pile of essays that he had been putting off grading. Any essay written by Mineta required at least four hours of sleep and three coffees before Shota could so much as touch it. The rest of them were left alone for solidarity's sake. Class 1A Rules You really gave your kids 15 specific rules for their class. All of the dorms have set. You didn't read them, did you? Vlad blinked. No, I did not. I don't see how they are now. Shota cut the man off with an exhausted sigh, dropping his head into his hand to pinch at the bridge of his nose. Vlad, I don't care about this bet nearly as much as you do, but a piece of advice. Read the rules. If you don't, there won't be a school at the end of next week. Is this a joke? Are you mocking me? I don't see the need to enact useless rules, Will. Shota stood, slamming his hands down on the desk. His vision was bleeding red around the edges, signaling his quirk trying to activate as he leaned closer to the other hero. Rule three. The word useless, worthless, geneless, and lace are banned. Read the fucking rules before you cause one of my kids to have a panic attack. You can't be serious. I believe I made it clear that I am completely serious. Every one of those rules was made for a reason. You will read them, and you will follow them, or suffer the consequences. Is that a threat, Eraserhead? Shota scoffed and grabbed his now cold coffee. I'm not stupid enough to threaten you in front of witnesses, particularly not when our boss has every inch of this place wired. This is more than your fucking pride. I put those rules in place with the safety of my kids in mind. So read them and follow them or you will be dealing with me on top of whatever they do to you. Shota stalked across the room, pausing at the door to glare back at Vlad one last time. I take it back. That was a threat. Hurt my kids and I will fucking end you. With that, Shota slammed the door to the faculty room and started for the 1B dorms. He could probably get a nap in before the kids finished with their training if he was lucky. Rule 1. Mineta is banned from the girls' side of the dorms. Anyone who finds him there can remove him how they deem fit. Vlad King was not worried about the bet he had with Aizawa. He had been a teacher for several years before the man had joined the UA staff, and he had proven year after year that he was more than capable of handling a full class of 20 kids at once. More often and more consistently than eraser heads, that's for sure. Vlad was certain that this was the only full class Aizawa had taught since he was hired. Walking into 1A's dorm, Vlad was surprised to see the small purple child taped to the wall next to the stairs to the girl's side of the dorm. He blinked. The child did not disappear. He blinked again. Another child, the purple girl with the earphone jacks, walked down the stairs and jammed her elbow into the boy's gut. Hey, no quirk use or fighting in the dorms, Vlad snapped. 
The girl, Jiro, maybe? Only blinked at him. Another one of the boys, the one with the mutated elbows and probable reason that there was a child taped to the wall, shrugged and pointed to the list of rules on the wall. I caught him trying to sneak into Jiro's room while she was changing. He was warned the last time he did this that I would tape his ass to the wall. Only following through. A headache pulsed behind Vlad's temple. Be that as it may, you can't use your quirks in the dorms or against other students. We have standing permission to deal with the perv as we want. Be glad Saro found him before I did, or you would have a deaf grape instead, Jiro shrugged and walked into the kitchen. Saro looked between her retreating back and Vlad before following. Vlad stared at the child taped to the wall. The child stared back. What had he gotten himself into? Rule number two. Ida, Todoroki, and Midoriya are not allowed off campus without supervision of at least two others. Yayorozu and Kirishima do not count. There's no reason that five of you need to go for a week's worth of groceries, Vlad stared down at the five kids in front of him, flicking between each student's eyes with a frown firmly set on his face. They were supposed to be limiting how many kids left at once, after all. What was Eraserhead thinking? But, Mr. Vlad King, sir, Todoroki has to go because it's his turn to pay, and Ida needs to get a pair of glasses fixed while we're out, and they need his face for that, and I promised Mina that I would make sure that they got the right shampoo this time, because last time they didn't. So, Tokoyami and Shoji need to go because they're the ones that are on watch duty, the green kid Midoriya, if you remembered right, rambled, twisting and tugging at scarred fingers while he spoke. The tall kid with the mask, Shoji apparently, passed the boy a fidget cube he pulled from somewhere. Vlad narrowed his eyes and crossed his arms over his chest. You're 16 and two of you managed to get your provisional license. You, Ida, and Todoroki can manage to get the groceries by yourselves. All five children froze, eyes wide, glancing between each other. Their teacher was telling them to break a rule, demanding it even, but the rules were made by Mr. Aizawa to protect them. Was this a test? A logical ruse? But, but the rule three says, I don't care what Aizawa's rules say. Midoriya flinched so hard at the harsh tone that Shoji and Endeavor's kid stepped in front of him. Vlad felt a flash of guilt for a second, but five kids leaving the safety of the school grounds at once to run basic errands was ridiculous. We're supposed to be limiting how many of you can leave school at once. I will not let five of you out to do a job that two of you could do. Tokoyami and Ida glanced at each other, silently communicating something between them. After a second, Todoroki looked over his shoulder and nodded to the other two. Here, Izu, take my card. Shoji, make sure they use it for the groceries and whatever hair stuff they need. Class rep, buy yourself another pair of glasses while you're out. Don't forget the soba. The three boys nodded, Midoriya slower than the other two. Todoroki and Tokoyami stayed between Vlad and Midoriya as Shoji wrapped two arms around his shoulder and Ida took the hand that was not holding the fidget toy, both boys carefully leading Midoriya to the door and helping him with his shoes. Vlad could feel two dark glares aimed at the back of his head long after the three boys were gone. Rule 3. The word useless, worthless, geneless, and lace are banned. There weren't many times that Vlad would admit to Aizawa being right. This would be number one as soon as he figured out how to get Midoriya to stop hyperventilating. He hadn't meant anything by it. Hell, he hadn't even been talking to Midoriya when the word slipped out, despite Eraserhead's warnings. Vlad had been sitting on the couch in the common room, flaring at the framed sign on the wall with 15 rules that were supposed to be governing his life for the next few days, muttering to himself that they were unnecessary. Well, he had said that they were useless. A simple slip of the tongue, a word he probably used a hundred times a day without so much as a second thought. This time when he used it, Midoriya flinched so hard he ripped the stairwell door off its hinges and immediately collapsed on himself, sobbing and begging for forgiveness. Vlad was on his feet in a heartbeat, crossing the room in two steps and falling to his knees in front of the panicking student. A racer had warned him, had told him that this exact thing would happen. Why hadn't he just listened then? Hey kid, Midoriya, I need you to breathe for me. Vlad reached out a hand like he would do to any student, any of his students who hadn't faced a villain with a five-point disintegration quirk on multiple occasions, who hadn't had four of those fingers around their throats for God knows how long. Midoriya lit up with green lightning as they scrambled back with a strangled scream. 
Just as quickly, Koda was there with a weighted blanket and a rabbit in his arms. The large boy crouched in front of Midoriya and whispered something before wrapping the blanket around, shaking shoulders, and placing the rabbit carefully in the boy's lap. Yayurozu turned the corner with a mug of tea in her hands that she carefully placed on the ground within Midoriya's reach without crowding him. A hand, jagged and hard as stone, gripped Vlad's shoulder and tugged him away from the terrified student. He went willingly, too stunned to fight back against being led around by the kids he was supposed to be in charge of. Maybe Eraser had a point in at least one of the rules. Vlad would have to apologize to Midoriya, later when the kid didn't look like a wrong word would shatter him completely. Rule 4. Bakugo and Midoriya are not allowed in the same room unsupervised. Of all Eraserhead students, Vlad would have put money on the hothead with an explosion quirk to be the first one to cause property damage during his week watching them. In a way, he would have been correct. What he did not expect was the resident sunshine child to launch Bakugo Katsuki through a fucking wall after less than three minutes alone with him in the kitchen. Bakugo laid on his back at Vlad's feet, panting and growling as he shook plaster from his blonde hair. Vlad opened his mouth to say... something. What was he supposed to say after watching a child yeeted through a fucking wall? This wasn't in any teaching class he had attended. Only for Bakugo to scream in rage and frustration and launch himself back through the hole in the wall. Vlad heard the sound of two bodies colliding before the sound of, presumably, the other child getting yeeted through a different wall. He wasn't getting paid enough for this. Rule 5. Kaminari cannot use the toaster. Hey, Mr. Vlad, can you help me? Vlad fought the urge to groan as he lifted his head from the back of the couch. How Midori and Bakugo had managed to put holes in two separate walls in less than five minutes last night was beyond him, but he spent the rest of the night babysitting the hothead and the sunshine child of 1A to make sure that no other incidents occurred. Oddly enough, once he was in the room, with the other two, they seemed to calm down for the most part, but in the two minutes it took for him to run to the bathroom, Midoriya had apparently thrown a chair at Bakugo's head. How did Eraser deal with them? He'd expelled full classes for less than what this hell class had put Vlad through in the last 12 hours. Demons, the lot of them. What is it, Kaminari? Well, I'm hungry, but Izu and Ida are out on their run and no one else is down yet, even if they're awake. And Mr. Aizawa said I'm not allowed to use the toaster, so can you? Kaminari, how old are you? The blonde blinked. Sixteen? It came out as more of a question. If you're sixteen, then how can you not feed yourself? Well, I can, but Mr. Aizawa- Forget Aizawa's rules and go make yourself some damn toast, Vlad nearly yelled, narrowing his eyes at the boy. Kaminari squeaked and darted out of the common room, disappearing into the kitchen, before Vlad could blink. Honestly, of all the ridiculous rules a racerhead could have come up with, telling a kid that he can't use a toaster had to be a new low. The lights flickered. Vlad blinked. The light above him exploded as the rest of the dorm plunged into darkness. Above him, there was a yell that sounded suspiciously like, Dark Shadow! before a regrettably familiar sound of a wall being knocked out. These weren't children. Eraserhead taught 20 demons straight from hell. Kaminari! Rule 6. The game is banned, and restarting the game is grounds for immediate detention. It was a quiet night. The first 10 minutes of peace Vlad had gotten since this whole thing started. No wonder Eraser looked so damn tired all the time if his kids were driving him this crazy. What he didn't notice were the sly glances and short nods between the students he was supposed to be watching. If he was going to ignore the rules, if he was going to make Izuku cry and yell when Denki shorted himself out after asking for help, then they would show him. They were Class 1A. They had fought villains time and time again and had come out the other end as family. They would show him what happened when someone messed with their family. I lost the game, Sarah's voice broke the silence of the room, followed by pure pandemonium. The purple girl, Jiro, launched a pillow at Sarah's face. Ojiro slammed his head into the coffee table he was sitting at. Yayorozu sighed, lifted her teacup up from the side of the table just in time for Uraka to launch it at Sarah's well. Bakugo's palms popped with rapid explosions as he screamed at the other boy. Mineta dove under the coffee table. Hagakure, Aoyama, Sato, and Shoji all groaned from where they sat scattered across the room. Ida leapt to his feet and yelled about Rule 6. 
Asui jumped from her place between Bakugo and Saro, sticking to the ceiling, her tongue wrapped around Ashido, Koda, and Kaminari, who had apparently short-circuited himself in the commotion and tugged them out of the direct line of fire. Todoroki blinked at his classmates, tipping his head in confusion. Tokoyami tumbled from his perch on the back of Midoriya's armchair, only saved from hitting the ground by dark shadow. Kirishima wrapped hardened arms around Bakugo as the blonde lunged forward to presumably choke Saro out. Midoriya watched the chaos unfold with a small smile, more at ease than Vlad had seen him since the first day when he questioned the shopping trip. He glanced at Vlad's stunned face and then the list of rules hanging on the wall before grinning, sunshine bright and poison tipped. I lost the game. Chaos sprang anew. Rule number seven. All board games require adult supervision. Midnight does not count. Amajiki does. You're telling me that you broke two tables and threw a desk out the window because you were playing a game? No, I'm telling you Cheeks fucking cheats at Monopoly, and I wasn't gonna let that shit slide. Half the class was playing with you or watching you play. How did no one else see her cheat? I see Hot is on her side. Dunt's face is scared of her. Frog Legs was too busy staring at her to notice, and Deku is the one that gave her access to the bank. Everyone else is just a bitch. Why don't you play something else? Because Deku counts cards, and last time we played Twister, I put grape juice in the old lady's office for two days. Just, just go to fucking bed. Rule 8. Ashiro and Midoriya are allowed in opposite sex bathrooms as long as they announce themselves and get verbal permission. Midoriya, boys are not allowed in the girls' bathroom. Frankly, after the show with Mineta on the first day, Vlad was surprised he had to say anything at all. All of Class 1A seemed to have a pact to keep the more perverted member of their class in line, so it made no sense that Midoriya wouldn't be held to the same standard. Uh, ac actually, Mr. Vlad King, sir, I'm not a boy. I'm non-binary. Not, not that I think that it m means I can ignore your rules, but uh, Mr. Aizawa said that since me and Mina share hair products and help each other on wash days, we can go to the other bathrooms? If we make sure it's clear first and j j Tears flooded the boys, no shit, the child's eyes as they rambled, scarred hands flapping down at their side. Gio wrapped an arm around their shaking shoulders and scowled at him. I already cleared the bathroom and told the other girls that it was wash day. Mina and Zuku were just going to wash their hair. Mr. Aizawa knows that they do it. You can ask him or call Mike or Midnight to supervise if it's such a big problem for you. She said the words like a challenge, narrowing her eyes and spreading her feet further apart as if she was preparing to jump him right here in the common room. Honestly, after the last few days, Vlad had no doubt in his mind that she would. Vlad needed a drink. There was no way he was having this conversation. First, Midoriya, I'm very sorry for misgendering you. It won't happen again. Secondly, why do you need help washing your hair? Can't one of the boys help you? Uh, Twilight, I don't know if you noticed, but everyone except for me and Zuzu have straight hair. The products we use are expensive, so we go have these on the bottles. The boys can't help Zuzu, because no matter how much we try to explain it to them, they just don't understand what their hair needs. Well, Baku Bro does, but nitroglycerin is a big no-no for hair, and the last time I Yama helped, Zuzu had glitter coming off them for weeks. Vlad hadn't heard the door open, but there was a pink girl dressed in a far too large tank top that he was pretty sure he had seen Bakugo wearing the night before, and yellow pajama pants that went far past her slippered feet. Be that as it may, I still can't find. Then we'll go to the boys' bathroom, Asudo shrugged and leaned against the door. If I won't allow them into the girls' bathroom, what makes you think? Look, Edward, I'm pretty sure I have a bigger dick than you, so will you let me go clear out the boys' bathroom after the girls have already planned their day around us, or will you let Zuzu in here so we can wash our hair? Your choice. Detention! Yeah, sure, whatever. Just call Midnight and have her interrupt her day to watch us wash our fucking hair. I'll get all the detention you want, but you're not winning this fight. Ashi- Hello, lovelies. What seems to be the issue? Midnight's voice broke through the stalemate, just as Ashido looked as if she was about to start spitting acid. Behind the teacher bobbed an empty tank top and shorts, Hagakure, if Vlad remembered correctly. It's wash day, and Arrow's heteronormative shit is stressing out Zuzu, Mina said with a whine, going as far as to stomp her foot. Vlad blinked at the complete turnaround from the girl that had just been gearing up for a fight. Midnight blinked, looking between Vlad and Mina before her eyes landed on Midoriya and softened. The rules say you're allowed if you get permission. Jiro scoffed. 
That's what we tried to tell him, but he won't listen. He hasn't listened to any of the rules. Something passed between the purple-haired girl and Midnight then. Something razor-sharp with glowing neon lights that screamed for Vlad to run. Well, I will never deny spending time with two of my favorite students. Come on, loves. As she herded Midoriya and Ashido into the bathroom, Vlad swore he heard her ask what exact rules he had broken. Whatever, he still needed that drink. Rule number nine. If you break it, own up to it. Unless it's Midoriya's. Then run. The only warning Vlad got is Ojiro sprinting for the front door of the dorm as if his life depended on it. Now, as much as he likes to pretend he doesn't know 1A and their quirks, Vlad watched the final exams with a racer head, so he had seen the aftermath of the training camp. He had even heard whispers of a fight that almost leveled part of ground beta. He knew the power that was held by 1A's resident sunshine child was nothing short of godlike. Awesome and terrifying, like a vengeful deity. When the same sunshine child who couldn't look him in the eye and spent the afternoon curled up with Tokoyami painting the boy's nails jumped a flight of stairs wreathed in green lightning, Vlad couldn't deny the flash of fear he felt. Glowing green eyes flicked over to him for three long heartbeats before focusing on the front door that was still partially ajar. They were out the door in a single leap, a crater left at the foot of the stairs, the only sign that they were ever there. Ida burst through the stairwell, wild eyes scanning the room. When they landed on Vlad, the man had a distinct feeling that he had just failed a test that he didn't know was happening. Call Midnight. Tell her it's a code green. What the fuck? Do it and pray we find them before they find Ojiro. With that, the class representative boosted himself from the dorms with his quirk, hunting for his friends before one of them could commit a murder. Vlad wasn't entirely sure why his hands were shaking as he called Midnight, but he knew deep down that he would never look at Izuku Midoriya the same way. Rule 10. If you can't find Midoriya, Bakugo, or Todoroki, inform a teacher. Vlad King. Hello, this is Officer Sansa of the Musutafu Police Department. Eraser said you are our contact regarding his hell class for the week. Yes? Wonderful. We have one of your students here. He found him taking selfies with an unidentified young adult in front of a defaced Endeavor billboard. The other kid got away through some warp gate, but yours just walked into our car and asked if we had any food. He wasn't the one to actually do the graffiti, apparently, but we can't let him walk back at this time. How did Todoroki get out? I've been sitting in the common room all night. You are surrounded by 20 teenagers with superpowers and, frankly, not enough adults to keep them contained on a good day. You are really asking me how the kid who makes ice slides for fun snuck out of his dorm without using the front door? You have a point. So are you going to come and get him or are we going to keep playing 20 questions? We fed and watered him already and I will be sending a bill to UA for my lunch that the kid stole. Uh... Yeah, yeah, I'll come get him. Give me like 10 minutes to find a babysitter for the others. Vlad hung up, staring blankly at the phone in his hand. Rough night? Vlad threw his phone directly at the new, number two hero's face. Hawks caught it in one taloned hand. Rude, but that's not the worst thing that's been thrown at me. How did you get- Not important. What's important is you have a baby bird to collect. Wouldn't want to tell Eraser that one of his babies was abandoned at the police station, would you? Vlad blinked. Hawks blinked back. Vlad nodded. Right, you watch the demons. I'm gonna go get Todoroki. All right, no problem. I love hanging out with the hatchlings. Rule 11. Hawks isn't adult supervision. Returning with Todoroki, who was still eating Sansa's sandwich, Vlad had expected to find the dorm mostly how he had left it. Hawks was the number two hero. He had taken at least one of the students under his wing. He was fully capable of watching 19 teenagers for a grand total of 20 minutes. Vlad opened the door to the dorms to see 18 students dressed in black robes and holding black candles crowded around the taped form of what had to be Mineta going off the size. Every inch of bare skin on Hawks was covered with googly eyes that rattled as he turned to greet them. Be not afraid. Todoroki nodded and accepted the robe Jiro was holding out for him. Vlad laid face first on the sofa and prayed to any other angel than the one currently rattling his way back to the circle of chanting children that this week would end soon. Rule number 12. No Endeavor merch is allowed in the dorms. There was a fire in the common room. Vlad was pretty sure he was hallucinating because there was no way that Izawa's hell class was huddled around the fire in the common room with fucking s'mores. 
Who was he kidding? That's exactly what the demons were doing, and he was ridiculous for hoping otherwise. What the hell are you doing now? As angry as he wanted to sound, the question came out as more of a plea. Not that Vlad could find it in himself to care. Three days with Aizawa's hell class, and he was ready to curl up in his own bed and cry for the next month. How the fuck did he manage all of them? How had none of them been expelled? Or arrested, for that matter? Rule number 12, Todoroki answered with an honest-to-God grin on his normally stoic face. Vlad didn't want to know. He didn't. But looking down, he saw a familiar face as an action figure melted from the flames. Isn't that your... Rule 12, no Endeavor merch in the dorms. Fuck the bet. Eraser needs a fucking raise. Rule number 13, all windows must be closed when taking naps. Vlad King Sensei, Ida burst into the common room in a blur of motion, seemingly not noticing that Midoriya was perched on his back fast asleep. How the kid had stayed up there when Ida was using his quirk, Vlad had no idea, but he had to admit, the two looked rather adorable. What? Where's the fire? Is there a fire again? No. Worse. Worse? What's worse than a fire? Someone left a window open and Uraraka didn't have on her gloves when she fell asleep. In the two seconds it took him to put a quirk to the name, Vlad realized deep in his heart that he would never sub for Aizawa again, and that this class would be stuck with Eraserhead as a teacher for the next three years as there was no one else insane enough to deal with this all the time. For fuck's sake, how do you normally get her down? Sue is trying to grab her, and Kaminari went to get Shinso from Class 1C. She isn't high enough or far enough yet to justify waking Izuku. Looking at the kid, quietly snoring on Ida's back, Vlad had to agree that waking them up seemed like a last resort kind of plan. How had he not noticed the eye bags rivaling Aizawa's before now? Alright, let's go try and get her down without any serious bodily harm. Truthfully, I'm more worried about her flying into the sun. You're fucking what? Rule number 14. Sleepovers in the common room are permitted on all nights as long as you're quiet. If Vlad made it through the week, he was going to buy Aizawa a lifetime supply of coffee and a fucking vacation for three years in the future when his hell class finally graduated. If he didn't make it through this week, he would still buy him coffee and a future vacation as well as a bottle of whiskey. Four days with this class had certainly shortened Vlad's lifespan by a few years. He could only wonder how Aizawa hadn't gone gray from the stress alone. Yet when he stumbled into the common room after hearing muffled voices through the door of his borrowed room, Vlad couldn't find it in himself to send the kids back to bed. Ida, Midoriya, Todoroki, Uraka, Kirishima, Tokoyami, and Shoji were sprawled around the common room, limbs in every direction and all connected some way or another. He couldn't imagine it was very comfortable, what with Midoriya's knee digging into Ida's ribs and Uraka's head definitely cutting off the circulation to at least one of Shoji's limbs. But their pale complexions and how tightly they clung to one another stopped him before he could think about moving them. These kids had been through hell, and as much as he might complain about their antics, they were still just kids. Yaya Rozu and Jiro were speaking in low voices in the kitchen, both with their hands wrapped tightly around mugs of tea. Both girls glanced up when Vlad entered the common room, and the hero didn't miss the faint, glittering light surrounding Yaya Rozu's hand as she prepped her quirk in case of an attack. He simply nodded to the girls and took a seat in the only empty armchair. One held most of Todoroki with Dark Shadow taking the rest of his weight. The other one had been the victim of Bakugo vs. Deku number 35. The least he could do for these kids was keep watch until morning. Then he had a man to see about a bet which was only made more urgent when he realized Uraka had once again forgotten her gloves when she fell asleep, and he spent the next two hours working with Yayorozu to get three sleeping teenagers off the ceiling without waking them or tripping over any of the other sleeping teenagers. He was pretty sure Jiro was filming the whole thing. Rule number 15. If Aizawa would yell, don't do it. I can't do it anymore, Eraser. I give. I surrender. Just take your fucking class back. Shota blinked. Four days was longer than he had originally guessed Vlad would last. Looks like he owed Zashi a new record after all. What did they do? Vlad groaned and collapsed into the chair opposite Shota's desk without waiting for an invitation. Normally, Shota would kick the chair out from under the man, but he looks like he was seconds away from passing out. Shota wasn't a monster after all. He also really didn't want to haul Vlad's ass to recovery girl. 
One drunken holiday party was enough, thank you. What didn't they do? I've been dealing with fights, fires, police, and God knows what else for four days. Eraser, those aren't children, they're fucking monsters. Shota supposed he should pity the man. He didn't, but he realized he probably should. His kids were a handful on a good day. They were several Geneva Convention violations on a bad one. It was sounding like Vlad had been through a string of bad days. Yet. You didn't follow the rules. It wasn't a question. The rules were in place to protect his kids and anyone who came into contact with them. The rules he had on good authority, both Midnight and Hawks, had informed him that Vlad was not following the rules and the kids were starting to rebel. That Vlad had outright ignored them at best and blatantly disregarded them at worst. Again with the fucking rules. The minute you broke Rule 3, you started something you weren't prepared to finish. Breaking Rule 5 after that and taking out your frustration on the boy who asked you for some help so he wouldn't break the rules solidified that. You upset Midoriya time and time again and then you yelled at Kaminari. Those kids love each other and have stood with each other against villain attacks over and over. The minute you hurt one of them, you became the enemy. Vlad blinked. I would never hurt... No, I don't think you would physically harm any of them. You're a decent teacher and an okay hero. What you did was prove to them once again that adults cannot be trusted. You're damn lucky the only police call you had was Todoroki sneaking out for a snack. The last time those kids lost their trust in someone, five of them stole Bakugo from under All for One's nose. You're telling me that you have all those rules in place just to keep those kids from going feral? Shota grinned, all violence and chaotic glee. They'll always be feral. They came that way, and they'll leave that way. Those rules are in place to make sure that they know that someone understands them, that I see what they need, and I can make sure to adjust for it. There's no way you can keep them under control with just 15 rules. They nearly demolished the building in two hours. Shota's grin softened just a touch around the edges as he stood. Fucking watch me. Hellspawn? Aizawa didn't yell didn't even raise his voice, but Vlad watched with barely concealed terror as twenty heads snapped to attention. He watched the tension in Midoriya's shoulders ease. He watched Bakugo uncurl his fists. He watched Todoroki and Ida move from their positions in front of Midoriya, protecting them. Explain. The kids didn't look at each other to decide who would speak. Midoriya met Aizawa's eyes without a hint of the anxiety that had been present since Vlad hadn't let five children go to the store. He broke the rules, Dad. He wouldn't let us follow them, so we didn't. Aizawa sighed and pinched the bridge of his nose. Vlad owed the man enough coffee to stop seven people's hearts. Why didn't you tell me or Hizashi that Vlad was breaking the rules? I would have put a stop to all of this. Midoriya shuffled their feet and twisted their hands around each other so violently that Vlad winced. Before he could say anything, Aizawa was pressing another fidget toy into the child's shaking hands that he had produced from one of the many pockets in his hero costume. Gentle with yourself, problem child. Midoriya smiled sheepishly and took a deep breath. We talked about it after he broke Rule 3. We all knew about the bet, and the only ones of us that could really get hurt by him not following the rules were ready for it after that, a and he really only broke Rule 3 once, so it wasn't even that bad. We knew that if we told you or Mama, we would have ended the bet immediately, and we didn't want you to lose. Aizawa sighed and stepped forward, reaching slowly for Midoriya and resting a hand on their wild curls. Kid, all of you are more important to me than a stupid bet. I would have ended it because I chose to make sure all of you were okay. Midoriya straightened, glancing between Vlad and Aizawa before shrugging. We thought about that too, and we decided that if he broke a rule more than once, we would tell you or Mama. But he never did. We did tell Auntie Nem and Kigo Ni when they were here. They were going to tell you if it got really bad. And you know, Kigo has feathers planted on like three of us to monitor our health. So really, it would have been okay. We just wanted to make sure that he learned. A soul deep sigh left a racer head, and the 1A teacher dropped his head to rest on top of Midoriya's. I'm proud of you all. For looking out for each other. You're all grounded for the weekend for harassing a teacher, and Todoroki is cleaning the common areas for a month for getting arrested. Detained, multiple voices helpfully interjected, but I am proud of you all. Midoriya smiled and wrapped scarred arms around Eraserhead's middle, pressing their face into the man's chest. 
can we add Vlad King does not count as adult supervision to the rules too? I already sent Zashi to print a new list for the common room. Authors and Notes Biblically accurate Hawks lives in my very soul and I will never be rid of him. Hope y'all enjoyed. I was definitely giggling the whole time I wrote this.